So different textbooks go into different depths. So no one's really sure how much the IB would ask about this. So this is the most that I've seen. I'll give you the full explanation. So for E1, first of all, the curly arrow shows that the bromide comes off and leaves a carbocation. And the second step is that OH- comes along. Well, this looks very familiar. Isn't this SN1, SN2 business? No, no, no. This is elimination. We are using alcoholic hydroxide here to get an elimination reaction. There are the movements of the electron pairs with the curly arrows. But what does that actually mean? Well, that OH- comes over there, grabs the plus, and all of that moves off to make water. And then that pair of electrons left hanging goes into the double bond, making ethene. So let me just uh, put the reactants back in again. So it was that carbocation, plus E cat, and OH minus. Smashing. So that's E1. Well, why is it called E1? E for elimination. I've removed something from my reactant. And 1 is the molecularity of the rate determining step. So that means how many reactants are in the rate determining step? Just one. So it must be the top one here the rate determining step being the slowest step. And don't forget, it has to be hot alcoholic hydroxide, or it won't do this. E2, well, that's a one-step process. So all of this is happening in one step. As that goes there, and that goes to become a double bond, Those electrons go there, and that's made water. Mm. So that's all in one step. The previous one was two steps. Let me write that out a little clearer. So that's just a one-step process, elimination. Now it's E2. Oh, don't forget hot alcoholic hydroxide. Otherwise it won't eliminate. It will substitute. The solvent's important. Alcoholic gives you elimination. Aqueous gives you substitution. So E2, which means the molecularity of the rate determining step, is two. There are two reactants in the rate determining step. Well, there's only one step. So there we go.